Okay, Peter, so we're here to talk about White Povetkin 2, and obviously it's not very long ago we were talking about White Povetkin 1. Interestingly, in that uh, prediction analysis, I said that I thought it was a very 50-50 fight. You know, Povetkin was always dangerous um, in the last couple of years, has always been underestimated and always carries that danger and that knockout power. And then we saw what happened with White. You know, he looked like he was dominating the fight, two knockdowns in the fourth round, and then Povetkin came flying out for the fifth round and caught White up against the ropes with that left uppercut and, you know, a brutal, brutal knockout. So... We've now heard, you know, Eddie Hearn has announced that the rematch is going to go ahead on the 21st of November. So he's going straight back in there, which to be fair to White was what he said, you know, literally when he got himself off the canvas, said, I want a rematch. You know, he couldn't believe it had happened to him. Um, you know, the, the feeling was maybe he'd rolled the dice one too many times, taking all these hard fights, waiting in this perennial number one contender position that he's been in famously for over a thousand days. So looking at this rematch... There's a couple of question marks over the rematch initially. Um, incidentally, White doesn't have a license to box at the moment. He's been suspended by the British Boxing Board of Control um, after that knockout. And there will be some tests that he will have to pass to box again um, in three months' time on the 21st of November. But, you know, they've already said that uh, you know, they, they fully expect him to pass those tests. So let's say that gets the go ahead. Then it's the venue. So Eddie Hearn said at the time they were thinking about the Royal Albert Hall and they were thinking about Wembley Arena, um, depending on the crowds. That was about six days ago when Eddie said that. And with this ever-changing COVID situation, it maybe looks like we won't have crowds back in November. So, you know, he's not going to want to book the Royal Albert Hall uh, without a crowd. So where is he going to put it on? It's going to be too cold to do the Matram Garden again. Um, you know, I would think that the York Hall is a, is a brilliant solution. It's this sort of spiritual home British boxing. It's a small compact venue which makes it so great when you're in there as a crowd you know you feel you can reach out and touch the fighters but it's it's you know, a bt sport have been doing a lot of shows from there uh, with frank warren and it looks you know it's a, it's a really good venue and I, I think that would be an ideal uh, no crowd venue but anyway we go on to white boxing on the 21st and i think the few things to look at peter obviously you need to look at the individual situation but looking at the broader picture what happens in immediate rematches. Well, the general rule of thumb is what happens in immediate rematches, if you go back through boxing history, you get the same result, it's just a little bit more emphatic. So if you look at maybe Patterson Liston one, or um, you know, more recently, if you look at um, you know, Tony Thompson against David Price, um, or if you look at even Frox Groves, you know, you've had, you know, you've had the result in the first match, which has kind of been underlined in the second match a little bit more emphatically. That said, there are exceptions to that rule. Um, you know, and we've got to look at, uh, you know, obviously Anthony Joshua recently went in six months after boxing Andy Ruiz and, you know, gave him a bit of a boxing lesson over 12 rounds, whereas he was obviously stopped, you know, and, and mauled in the first fight. So that, that was quite an impressive show and got AJ back to his number one position. Um, you know, and going back beyond that, Lennox Lewis famously has been hit. And this is maybe a better example because Lewis against McCall was hit with that punch from McCall, you know, that, that almost that one punch. I don't like to call it a lucky punch. Because you've got to remember, Sasha Povetkin has trained to throw that punch his whole life, you know, um, you know, and has been throwing it. So I don't like to call it a lucky punch, but it just landed perfectly on White. Um, but Lewis against McCall had a similar thing. You know, he had that lightning strike with McCall, lost to McCall. Incidentally, he didn't rematch McCall for another few years. He actually went to Emmanuel Stewart, who was in McCall's corner for that fight, and got him to sort of really work on Lewis, iron out some of those flaws. And when he eventually fought McCall, he was still very wary of McCall. And McCall famously had that strange breakdown in the ring, but he did win convincingly. Lennox did go for an immediate rematch against Hassim Rachman when Rachman knocked him out in five. But the reason Lennox blamed that, now that again was a one punch thing, you know, in the fifth round. Um, but Lewis blamed that on under preparation. He'd been filming Ocean Seven, it was at altitude, he hadn't trained at altitude, whereas, whereas Rachman had. But in the rematch, Lewis was devastating. He was really on his game. It was a different Lennox Lewis. There was nothing laid back about this guy. He came out and destroyed Rackman. So, you know, there are precedents for a fighter saying, look, I just wasn't switched on in the first fight and the second fight, I'm really going to bring my A game. And that's what Lewis did. The thing with White is White is insisting this was a lightning strikes thing. He was doing well in the fight. He was dominating the fight. His camp was good, he said. Obviously, we've got the question mark over him switching trainers just before the fight. Um, you know, he dropped Mark Tibbs, who had had that amazing run of, of, of victories with, you know, hard fought victories uh, in, in favour of Xavier Miller. And then he brought in Dave Caldell a few days before the fight. Um, but White says it was all great. White says the camp was great. The trainers were great. The relationships were good. He'd gone straight back in. I think he had a week off. He's gone straight back to Portugal to, to get in training for this next fight. So, you know, he says he's going to reverse it. Now, you know, you've got to say in a way after such a brutal knockout, is it wise to go back in, you know, with just 12 weeks? Um, I mean, the question mark is, does he need to do that? I mean, the other thing is, 
if you look at the heavyweight situation, we've already said White was banging on that door for a thousand days. He was a, the perennial number one contender. But that kind of put him a little bit ahead of the rest of the chasing pack, I thought. You know, you've got the three at the top, um, you know, uh, with, with, with Joshua Wilder and Fury. And I think they're going to be locked up with each other. Because interestingly enough, after all we talked about, where's Deontay and all that sort of stuff, um, Fury tweeted the other day, my next fight will be against Deontay Wilder wherever it is, whenever it is. So he seems nailed on for that. The WBC have also said they would be very interested in a Fury Joshua fight after that. But I think that freezes anyone out other than the top three for a title shot against any of those top three for those belts until 2022. So why is White in a rush? Well, you know, I think the answer is he's got to keep himself relevant. Like I say, it was almost like you had those three at the top, then you had White, then you had the rest of the chasing pack. Obviously, that loss to Povetkin has put him back down into that pack. Um, so, you know, to stay relevant and to stay knocking on the door, he needs to continue to occupy that number one WBC contender spot, which Sasha Povetkin has now taken from him. So, you know, he's rushing back into this. And it's a real must win for him. You know, you've got to say, fair play to Dylan, he's always shown he's the warrior. Since that first loss to Joshua, he's taken the hard route and he's deservedly got to his number one spot and deserves his shot. Um, and to have that taken away from him now, you know, you could argue that maybe he's rolled the dice once too often. But, you know, he, he needs to get that back. If he has a second loss to Povetkin, I don't think he will ever get that, that, that world title shot. If he has a second loss to Povetkin, he'll become, I think, a bit of a Derek Chisora gatekeeper heavyweight. Somebody that can't quite, is very, very good, very tough, to give anyone a hard fight, but maybe can't cut it at the elite level. So there's a lot to play for for White here to pr prove that he's world level, go straight back in at world level and get it back. Um, you know, one thing that did strike me going into this fight, well, I said it was a bit more 50-50, I think another thing to think about is that White only had seven amateur fights. You know, he was obviously a very tough guy. He was around the gyms, you know, sparring all the top pros all the time. Uh, but he only had seven amateur fights. Notoriously, the first one of those amateur fights was against Anthony Joshua. It was Anthony Joshua's third um, amateur fight when he beat Joshua, you know, and scored a knockdown on the first round. So, you know, it was on the back of that, really, that he managed to, to barge his way into the pros where he was, you know, fighting... Uh, nobody great, you know, sort of um, Hungarian doorman and stuff. And then uh, because of that victory against Joshua, he managed to almost talk his way into fighting Joshua again and wobbled Joshua. Th people thought this guy is OK. And then he managed to capitalise on that, um, even though he was defeated by going on an incredible run of fights and really winning the hearts of fight fans with his guts, and his determination and his willingness to fight anyone to get up there. Um, and I think that's showing through and jumping into this immediate rematch. I mean, he was he was really really iced, really knocked out, but he is adamant that he's going to go back in and do it again, like, he's not going to strike twice. He's sticking with the same camp. He's sticking with uh, Xavier Miller and Dave Cowdell. He's down in Portugal training. He thinks he's going to turn it around. Can he? Well, like I say, you know, it is always dangerous. Um, Povetkin is always dangerous. And it's so many people, particularly British fighters, I'm thinking Huey Fury, David Price, um, and now White, seem to be waiting for Povetkin to get old. You know, and to take that 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 big scalp. But you know, he's very canny. He's very experienced. He's very tough. Um, and like I said, you know, White only had seven amateur fights. Povetkin was a gold medalist and world champion. You know, so um, you know, and has only ever lost um, to Klitschko and Joshua. So the pedigree is amazing. And if you're waiting for him to get old, I mean, you know, White did knock him down twice in the fourth round. But you know, he's just he's just always always dangerous. So I think it makes for a hugely exciting fight. It's a very must win fight. For White, uh, we must remember that, um, you know, and is Povetkin going to get old in the next three months uh, or older than he was? You know, he was showing a few signs of wear and tear in that first fight. I don't know. So, again, I think it's almost like we're going in this fight, even with the result of the first fight, with the same thing. I still think it's a 50-50 fight. Um, you know, I, we're going to see how White, who is a natural warrior, reacts to that situation when Povetkin, like he did in the first fight, will want to shuffle up close to him. You know, and he'll be looking to load up that left uppercut, that left hook, that peachy shot of his. So how White deals with that, does he, does he sort of freeze a little bit or does he just think, you know, I've, you know, I've worked out how I'm going to deal with that left hand now. Uh, we're only going to see on the night and it'll only really come into force on the night when he's in the real situation. So still a lot of question marks. I still think it's a 50-50 fight. Sorry to repeat myself, but Povetkin is always dangerous. But I am going to say... Given White's mentality, you know, his, his warrior mentality, his absolute must win in this fight, he's going to be super switched on. I think as he's fond of using that phrase, maximum violence, you know, I just think he's going to be that little bit more awake and I'm going to back White to stop Povetkin in the mid to late rounds in the rematch, wherever it is. Um, on November the 21st. And I'm really looking forward to it. It's a great fight with the heavyweight division. And uh, yeah, 
come and wait.